so let's get into it. Um, um, the first one says perform the indicated operation and it says leave in factored form. Um, so what you'll notice about these two terms is you would have to get a common denominator because even though they look similar, they're different signs. And so like on this side, you'd have to multiply by x minus 2 over x minus 2. And on this one, you'd have to multiply by x plus 2 over x plus 2. So when we do that, we get um, x squared minus 5x. That 5x comes from negative 3x minus 2x. Then negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Now on this one, we're doing x times x is x squared. 2x plus 6x is 8x. And 6 times 2 is 12. And then that goes to x minus 2, x plus 2. Order doesn't matter. Um, now what we need to do is distribute this. And so this turns into x squared minus 5x plus 6 minus x squared. So that, that cancels. Uh, minus 8x. So negative 5x minus 8x is negative 13x. And minus 12. So you'd have 6 minus 12 is negative 6. And there's your x minus 2, x plus 2. Um, so that's that answer. Um, on your next one, you have a piecewise function. And this is a two-sided boundary. And so this number goes right there with a bracket. And then um, this one is a one-side boundary. So that means it goes to infinity. And so anytime you have infinity, it's going to be parentheses. Um, then we want our x-intercepts and our y-intercepts. So when x equals 0, then that means you have to use the negative 2 less than or equal to x less than 1 because 0 falls in that boundary thing. And so then you do 0 plus 6 is 6. So that means 0 comma 6. So in other words, that's your y-intercept. Um, on the other one, you'd have to say y equals 0. Um, but we don't know at this point like which one to use. Because if you did 0 equal x plus 6, then x is negative 6. And if you did 0 equal negative x plus 5, then x equal 5. And you don't know which of these are actually right. Now, we know from seeing the key that the 5 is right. But you don't really know which one. So based on that, you need to graph it, even if you graph by hand, instead of the calculator. So... Um, we'd say between negative 2 and 1 we're going to have slope equal 1 and y-intercept is 6 so that means you got to go up to 6 put your dot and then you're going up 1, right 1 and then left one, down one, left one, down one. So for this end, it looks like that. And this is a solid dot. Um, 
because it doesn't continue because it's a two side boundary. And this definitely, um, for this end, because it's a less than one, needs to be an open circle. Okay, so this one is closed and this one's open. Now the other thing you'll see is that one, it's nine, and so uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that'd be this dot right there. And then what we're saying for this one is our slope is negative one and our y-intercept is five. Now on this left side, we notice it didn't cross the x-axis anywhere. So if it doesn't cross the x-axis on the left, then it's not going to be this. So it's not this since didn't cross the x-axis. Because it stopped at negative 2. Okay. Stopped at minus 2. Um, so that means, like, if we use our earlier math, we know our answer is going to be 5 over here. Um, but let's just continue going. So on this one, we only care about if it's greater than 1. So we don't really have a y-intercept. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this one in red. And I'm going to say at x equals 0, it doesn't count. You'd have to start at 1. But um, what I like to do is I actually have my curvature of my line right. And so I'll find 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm just going to make an open circle there because that means it's not included. And then if it's 1, it's 4, um, which is here, which is, again, not included. But then uh, from this point on, it should go down one, right one. And then, you know, we would just continue it. And um, this is a part like way over here that should end up being five. So um, that's how you do it completely by hand. So if you were doing it from the calculator, um, you would go to a new document, add graph, press the button to the right of the nine, like in between the nine and the book, um, go to piecewise three by three, and we need um, three pieces. It's really three by two. Um, and you'd say x plus 6, 9, and negative x plus 5. Um, then for these, we need our boundary. So we type negative 2. And you see the little inequality symbols. you got to do control equal. And this would be less than or equal to x less than 1. On this one, we just have x equal 9, or x equal 1. Um, and this one would be x greater than 1. So that's the graph for it, um, which is like what we got over here. Now that dot didn't show up. Remember, you got to change your window if you want to see it. And sometimes that doesn't even show up. Like sometimes the dot is uh, misleading. I don't see the dot at one nine. But what you can do is look in your table and 
it says piecewise right there because it doesn't have F1, F2. It just says piecewise. And so like over here on this end, it's saying undefined for negative three. For negative two, it's using the left boundary. Same for this, same for this. At one, it's using that random point. And then at two, it's using three, which is from this one, three, two, one, zero, like that. <clears throat> so that's your calculator um, instruction, as well as your handwritten instruction. <clears throat> so that's how you get your intercepts. So the first one was the y int, the second one was the x int. Um, now what we want to do is get our range. And, well, I mean, the graph matches this one. Um, I'd always look for the top thing, like 1, 9. And these two don't actually have it. And then between these two, um, you just got to pick the right graph. Um, this one has like a closed circle, open, open, and this only has closed open. So again, we need closed, open, open. Okay, um, so now for this part, what we're looking at is the range. And so this is the Y values. And so um, it's basically low to high. So um, just do it like this. It's any negative number. It's even okay right here where there's a hole on one side because it's closed on the other. And so then the range just continues and there it stops. And that's at seven. And then it has a little jump and then it goes to nine. So um, we can see that again in our calculator if you want to confirm that. Um, well, there's the Y's undefined. There's four, five, six. Now, right there it jumped to nine. And so um, you might need to do your trace see at point nine it's six point nine but then when you go to to one I guess it, it does say seven like just barely before one it's barely before seven um, and then if you go to the right it's going to jump over here for this function. So um, that's how you can get your answer. Um, the other way is just plug in one to one plus six, seven. And so it's approaching seven, but not touching it. And so it's an open parentheses. Okay, and then um, for this part, it's not continuous on the domain because at one, you know, all the right boundaries are one. Um, it does have a jump discontinuity. Okay, so that's really good instruction on that one. Um, now let's go to the next. You have another piecewise and these are both one-sided. And so that's why the domain would be negative infinity to infinity. Because if you have linear and you have quadratic, then it's going to be like this. Um, now for your intercepts. Um, we know if we plug x equals 0, then we have to do 0 squared, and so that's 0. So 0, 0 is an answer. Um, and for the other one, 
Um, I guess we can just graph it. Zero, zero, one, one, two, four. So that's that side. Now, um, for this side, what does it mean? Um, on this one, our slope is 1 and our y-intercept is 3. So if our y-intercept is 3, then you'd have an open circle at 3. And it's the thing where it's up 1, right 1 repeatedly, but since we're on the left side, it's down 1, right 1. I'm sorry, down left, down left, down left. And so that gives us to negative 3, 0. Um, the other way was with the calculator. Um, and then the other way was if we say y equal 3 plus x and say 0 equal 3 plus x, then subtract 3, and you can say x equal negative 3. So there are a variety of methods you can use. Um, and then our graph matches this. And then our range, um, it's like low to high. But since it's um, one-sided on both of them, it's negative infinity infinity. And then it's discontinuous at zero because that's where the jump is. Again, that's where um, this number is. Okay, now on this one, we have an absolute value function. And if it's negative 1, then the answer would be 2. If it's 0, the answer would be 0. And so it's like a V. But it's only the left side of it. Now this one we actually have x cubed. So for x cubed, we think 0, 0 cubed is 0. Um, 1, 1 cubed is 1, 2, 2 cubed is 2, no, it's 8, 2 times 2 times 2, and then 3 would be 3 cubed, which is 27, because it's 9 times 3, and so you can see it rises pretty steep. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. so here and there. It's kind of like a check mark, um, so that's that graph. Now your domain is based on this number because it's again two-sided. Now this is one-sided, and so it's a bracket where it's two-sided because it's less than or equal to, and then it's infinity on the other one. Um, then your intercept is pretty straightforward at zero zero. That is considered your x int and y int. Um, and don't put 0, 0, comma, 0, 0. Um, you don't put it twice. Just put it once. Um, then your range is from the low to the high. And so this is like equivalent to, x, uh, to y greater than or equal to 0. Um, but that's like from zero up, zero to infinity. And then this particular one is connected. It's not a jump. And so it is continuous. Um, now on this one, what you have to do is um, figure out your boundaries and your expressions. I like to do the boundaries first because that's easy. Um, I see that here it's negative 1, here it's 0, and so that's why you put those numbers there. And on this one, it's 0 to 2. So you get your boundaries, 
Then for this one, it's negative slope. Because the right side is down. And you're counting down to right one. And so that means m equal negative 2. Um, the next part would be find your y-intercept, but it's just 0. Um, when you get to higher math classes, um, you could have different y-intercepts. But this one is negative 2x, because your y int equals 0. So it's just y equal negative 2x. Now on this one, you're going up 1, right 2. Um, and again, you're starting at the origin, and so your y n to 0. So that's a half x. Um, so don't forget your x. Um, I've seen before where some people just put your slope but not your x. Okay, um, now on this one it says apply everything to the square root of x in the order listed. Um, one thing, just I wanted to take a quick time out, um, just discussing all the different functions. So if you have square root x minus 3, that means right 3. If you have x minus 3 squared, that means right 3. If you have x minus 3 cubed, that means right 3. If you have the absolute value x minus 3, that means right 3. And if you had 2 to the x minus 3, that means right 3. So it depends on whatever type function you have as to what you do. Um, but those are all equivalent to right 3. Now, in your problem, it's saying up, not right. I know, like, on a different version of the problem, it said right. And so um, we just got to pay attention to the words and the function. So if it's up 3, then that'd be like y equal square root of x plus 3. The plus 3 does not go underneath the square root because that would actually turn into left 3. Now, when it says reflect about the, the x-axis, that means you have to go negative parentheses square root of x plus 3, and that turns into negative square root of x minus 3. So this is step 1, this is step 2. For step 3, we're flipping across the y-axis, and so basically, you need this extra negative sign right there. That's the one for reflect the y axis. This one was the x axis. Okay, so that's how you work that one. Um, now on this one, it says, um, suppose your x intercepts are three and eight, which means three zero and eight zero. It doesn't tell you a function that you could type in the calculator. Um, you just need to know what the movements are. And so if it's in parentheses like that, that means left 3. So you go 3 minus 3 is 0, and 8 minus 3 is 5. And so then your answers are 0 and 5. This one is x minus 2 in parentheses, so that means right 2. So you go 3 plus 2 is 5. 8 plus 2 is 10. Now, when you're doing your vertical stretch, it does not change your intercepts. Vertical stretch does not change the intercepts. And so it's back to the original. And then if you flip it horizontally, like reflect the y-axis, changes the signs.
And so instead of 3, you'd have negative 3. And instead of 8, you'd have negative 8. Now also, just as a side comment, if you had negative 3, that would change to positive 3. And if you had positive 8, that would change to negative 8. So be careful on whatever they give you. Um, it basically changes your sign. But this is the one that you want because you had both positive here. So that means you're going to have both negative here. Okay, now on this one, it wants to know where it's increasing. And it's increasing originally from there to there. Remember, these are x values for increasing and decreasing. And so um, this particular one, you're going left 5. And so you go negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. And negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. So that's your boundaries. Also, pay close attention to whether it needs parentheses or not. Um, it's an interval, so it needs parentheses. Compare that to the other one where these are just numbers. Just numbers. Okay. Um, now this one you're going x minus 9 which means right 9. And so you go negative 3 plus 9 is 6. Negative 2 plus 9 is 7. And so you go 6 to 7. And then uh, for this one, you reflect the x-axis. And so if before it was increasing, this is like the before, then after, if you reflect the x-axis, it would look like that. And so then it's going to be decreasing. I'll just put after. After reflect x-axis. Okay, and then this one... Um, reflects the y-axis. And so if you have negative 3, that changes to positive 3. If you have negative 2, it changes to positive 2. And um, let's do the before after. So before would be like this. And now if we reflect the the y-axis, then it's going to go like that, which is decreasing after, because this was increasing before. So that's how you know which one to use. Um, on this next one, you have a plot and you're going to need to do your regression. So remember to do um, add list and spreadsheet. And label it x, y. And then you do um, stat, calc. And then you're going to do things like on this one would be exponential regression. This would be Linreg. This would be Logistic. Um, this would be Quadreg. This would be Cubic. And this would be Log. So um, on this one, what we notice is the Y values are kind of going like this, where you have a max right there. And so you, um, the one would be the uh, quadratic regression based on the data. Um, and so that's going to be this one. 
Um, now, to get these numbers, um, you got to do your best fit on Quadrag. So, um, you go new document, list and spreadsheet, call this X, call this Y. And then make sure you type in all your numbers right. One ninety seven, two oh five, two eleven, two oh eight, two oh three, and one ninety. Okay, so then you do your menu four one. So menu four one. And we want quadratic. And so like on my calculator it's number six. Now um, notice on linear regression there's mx plus b, which is the one you usually use. There's also a plus bx, but I don't ever use that. So if it is linear, use three, not four. But we're doing quadratic. Put x here, put y here, press OK. And that's how you get your answers. Now, um, if you're on the box, it shows you more numbers, um, so you can round appropriately. There's you know, all the numbers right there. Now, this one in particular, um, at the box on um, C, it says 0 0.410, but after the O is a 7. So um, this is from 148.4107. And so um, actually be on that box because I don't want you to miss it because of one number, you know, when you weren't on the right box. So make sure you do that right. And then for a 35 year old man, um, we got a plug in X is 35. That's what I would probably do. Um, otherwise just use the, the table. Negative 0 0.023 times 35 squared plus 2.401 um, times 35 plus 148.411. Um, so that gives you 204.271. And they want you to round to the nearest integer, so that means the whole number. Okay, um, that looks like a good stopping point for this video. Hope that helps.